So for no specific reason at all, I decided to make a procedural pendulum setup in Blender, with the Arduinos. This video would be specific to Blender 3.1, but if this is something that you would like to try out even if you're still using 2.93, or if you want to see a different approach to doing something like this, I recommend watching this video by The Infinites. So let's get into it. Essentially, the node setup will consist of two distinct parts, with one part of the node tree being responsible for creating the geometry of the pendulums, and the other part being responsible for creating the procedural movements of the pendulums. Add a plane. Then head over to the Geometry Nodes workspace and add a new node tree. Add a mesh line, an instance on points node, and a curve line from the curve primitives. Set the mesh line offset C to 0, and set the offset X to negative 1. This determines the direction that the mesh line is aligned to. This value also determines the distance between the pendulums. Set the curve line to direction, set the direction C to negative 1, and set the length to 3. Then connect it to the instance input of the instance on points node. Since the mesh line is used as the points that the individual pendulums are instanced on, the amount of pendulums is directly connected to the count value. Next, let's add some balls at the bottom of the pendulums. Add an instance on points node, an icosphere with a subdivision of 3, and a radius of 0.5, and an endpoint selection node. Connect the icosphere to the instance input. As you can see, since each curve line consists of two points, the icosphere is being instanced on both of them. However, since it's a curve, it's possible to select any number of points of the curve, starting from either the start of the curve, the end of the curve, or both. To demonstrate, here is a curve that has been resampled to 20 points, and on each point an icosphere is being instanced. I am then using the endpoint selection node to select a different amount of points starting from either of the ends. Set the start size of the endpoint selection node to 0, and connect it to the selection input of the instance on points node. This way we are only selecting the last point of the curve to be used for instancing. Next, let's create the rods that the balls are attached to. Add a join geometry node, a curve to mesh node, and a curve circle. Set the resolution of the curve circle to 6, set the radius to 0.05, then connect it to the profile curve input. And lastly, to smooth out the mesh, add a set shade smooth node. And that's about it for the actual geometry of the node tree, so let's move on to creating the procedural movements. Set the end frame of the timeline to something large, so that there is enough time for the pendulum animation to play out in full. Add a rotate instances node after the first instance on points node. And make sure that the output is connected to both the second instance on points node and the curve to mesh node. Add a combine XYZ node, a scene time node, and a math node set to sign. Connect the seconds output of the scene time node to the sign node. Then connect that node to the X input of the combine XYZ node. And finally, connect the combine XYZ node to the rotation input of the rotate instances node. If we now press play, the pendulums will be moving back and forth in a way that resembles swinging. And that's because we are feeding the current time of the timeline through a sign node, which gradually interpolates between negative 1 and 1 and back. However, there are two things that need to be fixed. Firstly, all the pendulums are swinging at the same speed. And secondly, they are all reaching the same height when they swing. To make the pendulums swing at individual speeds, 
add an index node, a map range node, and a math node set to multiply. Connect the index node to the value of the map range node, and disable clamp. Set the from max value to the amount of pendulums minus 1, so in this case 9. This means that we want to take the values of the value input, ranging from 0 to 9, and map them to a new range. The new range that I will use is a 2 min value of 2.5, and a 2 max value of 4.5. This new range essentially controls the maximum and minimum speeds of the pendulums. Connect the multiply node between the scene time node and the sign node. Then connect the map range node to the bottom value of the multiply node. If you want a value that can easily control the speeds, you can add an extra multiply node after the map range node. That way you can increase or decrease the speeds by adjusting the multiply value. Next, let's make it so that the maximum rotation of each pendulum is controlled by its speed. Add a math node set to multiply after the sign node. And connect the map range node to the bottom value. Then, to control the maximum amount of rotation, add another multiply node between the new multiply node and the map range node. Then set the bottom value to something like 0 0.2. As a final touch, I would like to be able to add materials to the geometry. Add a set material node after the curve to mesh node. Then add another set material node after the instance on points node. This way it's possible to select different materials for the different parts of the pendulum. And that's pretty much it. So let's add some functionality to the setup that allows us to change some of the variables of the pendulums out here in the modifiers tab. Let's start by making it so that we can increase or decrease the amount of pendulums and still have it in a functional state. Connect the count value of the mesh line to an empty output of the group input node. Then connect that same value to the from max value of the map range node. Now we can create a pendulum line of say 100 or 1000 and still have it working as it should. Some other values that might be nice to be able to control in the modifier is the speed of the pendulums and the maximum rotation. Connect the multiply node after the map range node to the group input. Press N to open the property sidebar and rename the input to speed. Then do the same with the multiply node that we use to control the maximum rotation. The last two values that I would like to have access to in the modifier is the distance between each individual pendulum and the length of the rods, so I will connect those inputs to the group input as well. Of course, other parts of the node tree can be exposed in the modifier as well. For example, instead of using an icosphere, you could add an object info node and connect the object input to the group input. That way you can replace the balls with any object that you want. It might also be a good idea to connect the scale of the instance on points node to the group input as well. And that's how we can make a procedural pendulum setup with geometry nodes. I hope you found this video helpful, and that you learned something new. See you next time.